welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariella if you're new. I'm a first year medical student and I make videos about my medical school experience and about my life in general. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, please leave a like and a subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I'm so excited to meet new people and talk to new people about my journey. Today, I was originally going to post a Lululemon haul that I filmed and edited already, but I decided since things are constantly changing in the current climate of education because of COVID-19, I wanted to talk about how I'm adjusting my schedule to being at home because as you can see, I'm not in my room in Philly, I'm not at med school. I decided to come home when my brother's school got canceled and subsequently my school also got canceled. Canceled, it's not really canceled, I'll explain in a minute, but basically the campus is not completely shut down it's still open for research but students and a lot of the areas that students congregate in are closed so nobody's really on campus anymore last thursday i think we received word that a couple of the events were being canceled that progressed to postponing in-person classes until March 27th and then just yesterday we got another email that said in-person classes are now postponed until May 1st which is very close to the end of the semester I think my finals week is like the first week of June so it would be basically only a month of in-person classes if things stay the same but they could get better they could get worse nobody really knows what's going on a lot of these decisions are being made on a case-by-case -case basis and so the faculty that teach us our courses don't actually know what's going on and don't find out about this stuff until we do so a lot of it is up in the air and we're all just really trying our best the way that our education is working currently is that all classes are virtual so they will either upload a recording from last year or professors will record new lectures on their own or in the auditorium and we listen to those via Yuja or Tegrity, just whatever recording service was used. This isn't a huge change for us because I would say probably only like 30 to 40 percent of the class went to lecture anyway so I was one of those lecture goers and this is why this video is kind of for other people who go to lecture or for people who have mandatory lectures because I found it a little bit more difficult since I was used to going to school. Um, I found it more difficult to adjust to being at home. In terms of our labs, we're still not 100% uh, sure what's gonna happen. For OMN Lab, they're planning on posting videos of the labs. They recommend practicing the positioning, but not necessarily the techniques, because you don't wanna practice something that you've had no experience in without the physicians around to monitor you. And even in an in-person lab, we're very cautious about what we're doing so that we don't hurt anyone. So they recommended just practicing the positioning, and then when we come back to school, we can figure out what's going on from there. But of course, that was as of the March 27th deadline, which now has been extended to May 1st, so we don't really know what's gonna happen. In addition, currently our exams are going to be held via ExamSoft, which we can access from our computers like we could before. Rather than having us all go into the auditorium and take the test, we are just going to take it remotely. I think that answers everything about how my curriculum has changed. Really only the testing in the labs have changed significantly, but for me, because I went to lecture, I had to learn how to adjust my schedule to this new system. So, in order to figure out how my schedule has changed, I think it's important to talk about what my schedule was like before. So if you guys are interested in seeing this in real time, I would highly recommend going to my vlogs playlist if you wanna see a more in-depth analysis of what my day-to-day -day life was like, but I'm just gonna chat about it quickly here. So for the most part, Monday to Friday, I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I know, crazy. <laughs> I made that one video waking up at 5 a.m. for a week and I actually found that the schedule worked so well for me that I tried to keep it as much as I could. It adjusted itself to like 5.30, but it still worked out. So I would wake up at 5.30. I would pack my things, have a very small breakfast, pack lunch, and head out the door and then I would be at the gym by six o'clock. 
Normally I would work out for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on what I had that day. If I needed to be at school really early, it would probably be a shorter workout. If I could be there later, then it would be a longer one, but usually no more than an hour because where I live, the traffic is horrific. I mean, everywhere, every big city is gonna have awful traffic, but my school is about two miles away from where I live and sometimes it would take me 20 minutes in like the thick of the morning traffic to get there. So I would always leave the gym by about seven o'clock and get to school around like 7, 10, 7, 15. From there, I would do morning note cards and I would try and finish out my Anki cards in the hour to hour and a half time I had before lecture started. And on a typical day, lectures are usually between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. They will either like be in a smaller range or we would have afternoon lectures sometimes, so, like maybe one to two or two to three. But the afternoon lectures were more uncommon because we have labs in the afternoon. On a normal week, we would have one OMM lab per week. That's an hour and a half in the afternoon on Monday or Tuesday, depending on what group you're in. And so normally I would spend my mornings in lecture. I would either take an hour break for lunch or I would go straight to the library and work there for the afternoon until about 3.30 when I would drive home to avoid afternoon traffic. I'm like right on the cusp of the beginning of it. So it would still take me a little bit to get home. I'd work from about four o'clock to six o'clock and then I would stop doing work for the evening, just do things to enjoy myself and then go to bed by nine o'clock so that I can get up at 5.30. So that was the gist of my schedule when I was at medical school. Things are a little bit different here because they're outside forces. I can no longer go to the gym. I mean, it's not closed or anything. I have a Planet Fitness Gold membership, so I can technically go to any Planet Fitness location. And Planet Fitness is still open, but we just decided that we aren't gonna go anymore because there are so many people there and they have started testing positive cases of the virus in my home county so so i've been trying to wake up now at around 6 30 and that's because i'm not going to the gym in the mornings there are outside forces that i'll explain later as to why i've adjusted this but i will wake up in the morning and i have shown you my uh spreadsheet before that like it lists all the tasks that i want to do for each lecture i will highlight whatever tasks that i want to get done that day and I will just work my way through completing them. I'll usually take about an hour long break around noon. And then my family usually gets home around six o'clock and that's when I find it hardest to really study. What I'll do is normally we'll play badminton. <laughs> Let me know how you say that. Is it badminton? Is it badminton? I've always said badminton, but people used to think that was weird, so I'm not sure. We have a little makeshift badminton net out in our backyard, which I think, I'm not sure if I showed you before, but I'll insert a clip here if I haven't. That's really our main form of exercise just because it's so much fun to play with your siblings and like really get into it. So rather than going to the gym in the morning, I just play badminton for about an hour to an hour and a half in the evenings, depending on like what my family feels like doing. And then I save my note cards for the evening because note cards are kind of an easier thing where I can just shut myself in my room. I don't have a desk in my room, so note cards are easy to do in my bed. And I know I've said before, I try my best not to do work in my bed. I have a couple different spaces around the house where I like to do work. Primarily the dining table in the kitchen because that's like kind of the first place I had. I also have a little makeshift table in the patio so when it's warm enough, I will go out there. And then finally, sometimes I will actually work on my kitchen island or we have this like notch between our living room and our kitchen and sometimes I'll throw my laptop up there and kind of do like a pseudo standing desk situation. Those are the different areas that I like to work and I will do my note cards at night rather than in the morning because I like to get my lectures out of the way in the morning. That's something that I just genuinely hate so much about being online is I hate watching lectures. I don't know what it is. Something about having the professor there in person just feels like more of an obligation to me and I find it so, so difficult to focus and sit down and watch a lecture on my laptop. That's what my schedule is like now and that kind of leads into what I am going to recommend to you if you are a student who likes to go to lecture. 
This is how I modified my schedule so that I could do work at home. And if any of these tips are useful to you, then that's great, awesome. But it's definitely a work in progress. I'm not doing everything perfectly. I think it takes some time to adjust to a new environment when you're so used to learning in your original environment. And especially when there are forces like your family home all the time. If you have pets, that can be another distraction. I don't have pets, I wish I did. I would love to be distracted by a puppy, but I can't. Yeah, these are just my recommendations for what you should do if you are transitioning to working at home. So the first thing that I would recommend is try to utilize the hours when nobody else is in the house as much as you possibly can. I find that these are my most productive hours. So my parents work maybe seven, they'll be out of the house by seven and they'll be home by five for the most part. So I will try to utilize the hours from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. as much as I possibly can and try to get as many lectures watched because lecture, watching lecture is the hardest thing for me when my family's around because I can hear them having conversations and I wanna join in, but I can't escape it because none of my study areas are away from them. And that's another thing kind of moving along that I would recommend is try and make it so that your study space is not in the same area as the communal areas because you're gonna want to join in on that social activity and you can't if you have a lot of commitments. I unfortunately don't have my desk with me. I'm thinking about going up to Philly to grab it and putting it in my room because in my room would be better than nothing. But if you can, I would recommend trying to keep your study space away from where everybody congregates, like the living room or the family room or the kitchen. So utilizing those hours and avoiding commonly trafficked spaces is really important. Another thing that I would recommend that I always recommend just for good study habits in general is to change up your location if you feel like you're being unproductive in one spot. A lot of people can sit down and study someplace for eight hours and be totally the same productivity levels the entire time and that's fine. That does not work for my brain. After two hours in one space, my brain is like, okay, I'm done. Like, I'm not gonna work anymore. So I always need to be changing up my location. And that's why I have those different setups that I have been using. Another thing that I've been doing recently is I've been taking like a side table and putting it in front of the couch and sitting on the couch and taking notes while watching lecture, which is so comfy, almost a little too comfy sometimes, but it's fine. Another thing that I would recommend is to make a schedule for yourself, write out exactly what you want to get done that day and this is what my spreadsheet is for me it's a list of things that I need to do no matter what and that means that if my family comes home early and I'm not done with those things I need to remove myself from that and go somewhere else so that I can get those things done because otherwise I will just join my family shenanigans and I won't be productive Something else that I recommend is to actually leave your home every once in a while. So this is kind of depending on where you live. If you live in a big city, I know some cities are on lockdown and unfortunately that means you can't really do this, but I will go outside, I'll go for a walk, I'll just honestly take a loop around the house sometimes and just like pick up anything that's outside that we've left out there that I notice. I just need to get myself out of the study location for a short period of time to refresh myself. Sometimes we'll take a drive if we need to like pick up something from the grocery store. Refreshing my mind so that I can get back into studying while also not going totally stir crazy because I've been in my house for 14 hours and I'm just dying. If you can't leave your house, Try and do some at-home exercises in order to refresh yourself. I do this too sometimes where I'll just do like some jumping jacks or some squats to like get blood flow back into my legs after I've been sitting for a long time. That's something that I like to do that like makes me feel a little bit better, makes me feel a little bit more motivated. Speaking of stronger, my arms are so sore from badminton yesterday. We played a lot of games and my shoulders really hurt too. My study space is in the kitchen for the most part. It's at the dining room table because the lighting in that room is better and having that big window right next to the kitchen table really helps me like feel like I'm not stuck inside all day. However, because I work in the kitchen, I tend to snack a lot. So I try to keep mostly healthy snacks in my food area. This doesn't help because I'm not the one buying the groceries all the time, so sometimes unhealthy food slips through the cracks, but I make sure that there's like a bowl of grapes or maybe some cucumbers and hummus always pre-prepared and available for me so that if I get hungry, I can snack on those rather than like a chocolate bar. 
that's like one of the biggest challenges I think of doing work at home is I feel like I am constantly eating all day versus when I was at school I would have the stuff that I packed for lunch and I was totally satisfied with the snacks that I had there and I just you know you're not around food all the time so you don't feel like you need to eat all the time but now that I'm home I feel like I need to eat all the time I'm so hungry I don't know what's wrong with me but like I said, healthy snacks, try and get vegetables if you can that are filling. Another thing that I really love is I'll just take a can of garbanzo beans and rinse off the brine and eat those. I'll snack on those. You can roast them in the oven and they make these like lovely chickpea crisps. They have like a really crunchy texture and you can put tons of cool seasoning on them. It's hard when your brother keeps opening bags of chips and they're right there talking to you the whole time, looking at you while you're watching lecture. It's fine, I'm fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's honestly like not the worst thing in the world if you have, you know, a, an unhealthy snack every once in a while because you're a student and it's really hard to be a student and studying all the time sucks really badly. So especially if there are people around you who aren't studying, like my brother is on spring break now and so, Last week it was really great because we would sit at the table together and like study together and he would show me things he was learning and that was really cool but now he's on spring break so I'm alone <laughs> and he's playing Minecraft and I want to like hang out with him but I can't. Like I said, I try to remove myself from the situation. If he's watching TV, I'll ask him, hey, can you please use headphones while watching that? Cause it's kind of distracting for me and he's really cool about it. This might just be a me thing, but I've also found that it's really easy for me to drink a lot of caffeine because the coffee machine is right there. Like it's right there. I work in the kitchen, it's right there. So I decided yesterday that I'm gonna start limiting myself to only caffeine before 12 p.m. I'm not gonna have any caffeine after 12, that way I'm not awake all night. I think lastly, I would just recommend keeping your study space and your room and everything clean. I have this issue where like for some reason when I go to my apartment, if things are messy, I like freak out and I can't handle it and I need to clean it up immediately. But as soon as I get home, I don't make the bed, my life is a mess, there's clothing everywhere. I don't know what it is about being home that like makes me wanna do that but I would recommend just trying to keep your space as organized as you would if you were at school. A, because it'll help out your parents a lot and they like, they're not used to having you there. My parents were empty nesters for about nine months before we all came back, so. <laughs> Hello, not I if you're watching this, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just be respectful of the space that you have. I also have another issue where I don't wash dishes where I'm, when I'm home. And then I get distracted by watching lecture and then my mom comes home, she's like, why are there so many dishes? And then I feel awful. So avoid that if you can. Keep your space clean, keep your life organized. Make sure you're on a strict schedule, change up your location, stay away from your family members if you need to, because I get it. It's so much fun to be around them again, especially since this is probably one of the last times that the majority of my family will be together in one place for a significant portion of time. At the end of the day, it's really important that you maintain a schedule because if you don't, it'll be like vacation time and you'll definitely fall behind. So that's, those are my tips. And that's how my schedule has changed from being in med school in person to being more of an online virtual med student. If you guys have any questions about what my schedule is like or things that I do day to day, definitely leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you wanna stick around for more med school related content, subscribe here. And like I said, playlist of all my med school vlogs will be um, linked, so. Yeah, I think that's everything I have to say, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!